Hi, my name is Andy, and this video is called Five Quines. Uh, a quine is a program that prints out its own source code. So a program in some programming language that prints out its own code when you run it. Uh, why is that interesting? Well, it's interesting because it's self-referential, and self-referential things tend to be interesting. Um, and it's interesting because these are odd little programs. You would have thought that um, a quine was either a sort of impossible idea, or something that's easy and a silly trick. Actually, these programs are somewhere in between. They're kind of funny, awkward, uh, strange programs, interesting to look at. So let's look at our first one. Uh, this is a program written in C. Uh, it's by far the longest thing we're going to look at in this video, but it's probably also the simplest coin we're going to look at. So the program starts off uh, on the first line, uh, declaring, defining an array of uh, chars called data. And I've had to snip out the, the details of it, but basically inside that array, uh, is this entire program written as uh, ASCII character codes. So um, numbers uh, un under 256 that describe, uh, that list all the characters that you can see before you on the screen, um, except of course the the bit that says snip, um, otherwise you'd infinitely regress. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the beginning of this program is a full description of its source code. Uh, full listing of its source code, but in ASCII character codes. And if you look at the main method, um, the first thing the program does is it prints out const unsigned char data. So it prints out that first bit of um, itself. Then it loops through the data array and prints out all those numbers as numbers. So it's printing out, again, exactly what you would see at the top if it wasn't snipped out. Then you see a printf that uh, does a new line curly bracket. Uh, then we loop through the data array again. And this time, uh, instead of printing out the numbers, we print out the ASCII characters represented by that number for everything. Um, and then we finish. So basically, it prints out the array at the top, and then it prints out itself using that array as the data to print out itself. So here's my summary of how this program works. This program is basically the whole program uh, as a piece of data, then print out the data as if it was um, data, and then print out the data as if it was a program. Okay, but we've moved on a bit since. See, we've got modern programming languages. Surely we can express ourselves in much simpler ways and write a quine using less code. Well, yeah, how about uh, ZX Spectrum Basic? Uh, this program is a quine in ZX Spectrum Basic from 1984 or 1982. Um, this program uh, uses the list command in ZX Spectrum Basic, which prints out the whole program. Um, so I could express that as um, print the program viewing it as data. Now, a coin like this is normally seen as a bit of a, a cheat. Uh, there's a similar way you can do it where you can write a program which goes off and reads its own source code off disk and then prints it out, and that's, uh, that's considered a bit dull. Um, so let's have a look at another one that's a proper one. This is another C program, um, but isn't it beautifully short? This is one of my favorite programs of all time. So basically, um, this program is a main method which defines uh, a char array, but this time uses mostly, um, completely uses um, characters rather than numbers. Um, and it has some substitution parameters in it substitutes in two characters surrounding uh, a string and then the actual um, and it uh, and that includes so that's that's the whole of this program minus that bit in quotes if you see what I mean so then the very last line of the program so that whole purple bit is a string I had to wrap it over two lines but it's just a string um, that very last line of the program prints out that string but substitutes into itself itself and also substitutes in 0x22 a couple of times, which is a quote character. So that program will print out its own source code. Um, and the way I would explain that is it's the program as data, and then it's printing the data substituted into itself. Um, worth, worth reading and uh, looking at that program for a little bit longer to understand it. But of course, we genuinely have moved on since C, and we can, we genuinely can do things better in uh, some of the more modern programming languages like Python and Ruby. 
Um, so here is um, a coin in those languages. That's right, the empty program in Python and in Ruby is a coin. It prints out its whole source code when it runs. Uh, again, normally considered a cheat. But an interesting thought, I think you'll, you'll agree. Um, so let's uh, look at something a little more elegant than anything we've seen so far. This is our last coin. This is written in Scheme, which is a type of Lisp. Um, and if you're not familiar with the syntax, don't worry too much about it. The purple bit here is um, is quoted, but not quoted like a string is quoted in something like C or Java, um, but uh, quoting it in, a, in the way that Scheme can do it, which is um, that you view a little bit of program as data, but you still write it as a program. So this purple bit looks similar to uh, the rest of the program, but is actually quoted in the sense that it's seen as data. It still gets parsed and stuff by the parser, it's brilliant. Anyway, so what this program does is it defines uh, a thing called x, which is this whole quoted value. Um, and then at the end of the program it does this map eval x, which basically means um, for all of the lines in x, because that consists of a number of lines of code, um, evaluate those lines, as in run that bit of code. So there we're taking the data which we've seen as data and treating it as program to run. And then if we look at what's inside X um, in the purple area, basically what it is is um, it prints out uh, the define X part, and it prints a new line. Then it does this map lambda S right S new line X thing, which I'll talk about in a second. Then it, then it prints a few close brackets and new lines, and then it prints out that map eval bit that goes at the end and then the new line. So let's look back. Uh, the complicated bit, which is this map lambda s right s new line x. So basically, what that says is um, map means uh, 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 run this do, run this function for every line of this thing. So the thing that it's running it for is x, and the function that's going to run is this lambda s right s new line. So basically, what that says is for every line in x, write out that line and then write a new line. Um, <clears throat> now at this moment, um, what what it's doing is we when when this pro, when this bit of code is running is when we're inside that map eval x bit, we're running x. But inside that running bit of code, we're also using x. So because that first line defines something called x, when we're running that code, the code that's in x, we're also using the value of x at the same time. So the way that I would express that is. Uh, it's the program as data, and then run the run the data. And what I haven't put there is that that data uh, contains a reference to itself, and that's how you get the the kind of doubleness um, that you need in a coin of, of the program as data and the program um, as a program. Okay, and that's it for uh, your coins for today. There's loads more um, really cool coins out there. I'll link to some from. Uh, from the blog post uh, that you can get to from the show notes. Uh, hopefully there's a subscribe button somewhere on the screen at the moment if you want to get more videos. Um, if you want to look up on YouTube, there's my YouTube address. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll mostly see um, links to blog posts and videos. Um, if you follow my blog, you'll see updates on open source uh, projects I'm working on. Uh, new videos get posted on there. And uh, little technical problems I'm having uh, solutions I tend to stick on there. Um, if you want to look at the uh, list of all the open source projects I'm working on, have a look at artificialworlds.net and see you next time.